A continuous supply of oxygen is needed by all organs, tissues, and cells to function properly. Shock is widespread abnormal cellular metabolism that occurs when oxygenation and tissue perfusion needs are not met to the level necessary to maintain cell function. It is conditions rather than a disease and represents the whole body response that occurs when too little oxygen is delivered to the tissues. All body organs are affected by shock and either work harder to adapt and compensate for reduced oxygenation or fail to function because of hypoxia. Shock is a syndrome because the cellular tissue and organ events occur in a predictable sequence. Any problem that impairs oxygen delivery to tissues and organs can start the syndrome of shock and lead to a life-threatening emergency. After this lesson, you will be able to Describe the generalized shock response and systemic inflammatory response. Distinguish the similarities and differences of hypovolemic, cardiogenic, anaphylactic, neurogenic, and septic shock as well as multiple organ dysfunction. Explain the pathophysiology of the five forms of shock and MODS. Identify the clinical manifestations of the five forms of shock and MODS. Outline the important aspects of the medical management of the five forms of shock and MODS. And determine priority nursing interventions when managing a patient with each type of shock. The four types of shock are hypovolemic, cardiogenic, distributive, and obstructive. In hypovolemic, there is not enough blood circulating. We need to find out why. Is it due to hemorrhage, dehydration? Um, what does the body do? It increases heart rate. So you want to look at the concept map on page 815. In cardiogenic, the heart can't work right and pumping action is impaired. So why? Is it due to myocardial infarct, uh, ventricular fibrillation, tachycardia, cardiomyopathies, or myocardial degeneration? In distributive, blood exits the vessels and fills up interstitial spaces. Why is it due to loss of sympathetic tone, such as neurological reasons, or anesthesia, pain, stress, spinal cord injury, head trauma, chemical reasons? Is it anaphylaxis, sepsis, capillary leaks? And in obstructive, the heart muscle is fine, but it is prevented from pumping effectively. Why is it due to cardiac tamponade or pericarditis? So the stages of shock include the initial early stage, non-progressive stage, progressive stage, and the refractory stage. So in the initial stage is that the barrel receptors sense a decrease in the MAP and the brain kicks in the initial steps. The body attempts to compensate by causing an increase in heart rate and vasoconstriction. The body starts shunning blood towards vital areas. If that fixes the MAP, great. If not, then anaerobic metabolism kicks in. With anaerobic metabolism, you get a buildup of lactic acid, which leads to acid-base imbalances and electrolyte imbalances. Then there's an increase in baseline heart and respiratory rate or a slight increase in diastolic blood pressure and it may be the only objective manifestation of this early stage of shock. In a non-progressive stage, the kidneys and the barrel receptors sense a decreasing MAP so the kidneys release. They release the renin and decreases the urine production, which increases sodium reabsorption and causes vessel constriction, which raises blood pressure. The antidiuretic hormone tells the body to reabsorb the water, hence the decrease in the urine, and causes the blood vessel constriction in the skin. Together, these two maintain volume in the central blood vessels. Also released is aldosterone, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. It can remain in this stage for hours without permanent damage. Treatment at this stage would be to stop the conditions that led to the shock. Cellular effects are reversible at this point. Then we have the progressive stage. Cell damage occurs due to the buildup of toxins and tissues start dying out. There is deeper anxiety and the patient expresses concerns of something bad is about to happen. 
They may have immediate confusion. This stage of shock is life-threatening emergency. Vital organs can only tolerate this abuse for a short period of time, like an hour or even less. It's go time. You need to treat immediately. In the refractory phase, there has been too much damage to vital organs and too much hypoxia. Therapy is not effective because body can't respond to interventions anymore. There is a rapid loss of consciousness, non-palpable pulse, cold, dusky extremities, slow, shallow respirations, and unmeasurable oxygen saturation. So the assessment uh, for shock would include a history, physical assessment, psychosocial assessment. You need to make those focused assessments. Then you may actually also do labs. Nursing diagnoses can include hypoxia related to hypovolemia, hypoperfusion related to active fluid volume loss and hypotension, and anxiety related to potential for death and decreased cerebral perfusion, or confusion related to decreased cerebral perfusion. So what you want to do is figure out the cause and try to reverse it. Ensure the patent airway. Uh, start IV infuse floods, administer oxygen, elevate feet, stop the hemorrhage, give medications, and do not leave your patient. Okay, we're going to discuss anaphylaxis. It's a type of distributive shock. Uh, there's a hypersensitivity reaction. Usually etiology is an antibody antigen response. Any substance can trigger it. Symptoms appear within minutes but may not occur up to one hour post exposure. Symptoms may reappear 1 to 12 hours after symptom resolution, and late symptoms may be mild or more severe. Okay, so the idea is to reverse the effects of the mediators. Stop whatever has initiated the response if possible. Think about your ABCDEs. You may administer drugs such as epinephrine, glucagon, diphenhydramine, or corticosteroids. Okay, so let's discuss sepsis and septic shock. It begins with bacterial or fungal infection that enters the bloodstream. It can progress to systemic inflammatory response syndrome. Number one cause is bacterial infection that escapes local control, such as gram-negative or gram-positive. You want to make sure your hospital environment and medical personnel are using PPEs. Patient's skin, GI tract, respiratory tract, and GU tract are potential locations. Gram-negative bacteria are 50% of our cases. All tissues involved are hypoxic. Some organs may have cell death and dysfunction. Microthrombi formation is widespread. DIC sets in. You want to watch for decreasing oxygen sat, rapid respirations, decreased or absent urine output, or change in cognition or effect. Sepsis is considered if there are at least two SIRS criteria with a known infection, and these are hypotension, ULP, positive fluid balance, decreased capillary refill, hyperglycemia, unexplained mental changes, or rising serum creatinine. The final stage of sepsis, um, you will have multi-organ failure and uncontrollable bleeding occurs, and death is greater than 50%. With multi-organ dysfunction, you have cell damage that's caused by massive release of toxic metabolites and enzymes. The dead cells break open and release more toxins, which forms microthrombi. Death is imminent at this point. Risk factors for septic shock include malnutrition, immunosuppression, large open wounds, mucous membrane fissures, GI ischemia, invasive procedures, malignancies, and then greater than 65 years of age and infections with resistant bugs. Also, if a patient is receiving chemo, alcoholism, diabetes, chronic kidney disease, transplant recipient, hepatitis, HIV or AIDS, and the collaborative care includes to always use aseptic techniques, discontinue indwelling follies and IVs ASAP, and monitor for early detection of sepsis. You want to teach patients and families about signs and symptoms of infection and when to call the physician. 
This concludes the lesson of care of patients with shock. If you have any questions related to this lesson content, contact the instructor.